Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny. To all of my returning subscribers, hey, how you doing? And for those of you who are new to the channel, kick your feet up and relax as I go into my non-spoiler review of the movie The Photograph, directed by Stella Maggie, starring Issa Rae and Lakeith Stanfield. I'll give my non-spoiler review. We're gonna talk about the script, the direction, the score, and so much more. It's all coming up next. You don't wanna miss it. is Bunny. For those of you who are new to the channel, when I review a movie, I base it upon this platform statement. What is the plot of the movie and was the plot executed well? So now that we have that understanding of how I review the movie, let's go and let's discuss the plot. When famed photographer Christina dies unexpectedly, she leaves her estranged daughter, May, hurt, angry, and full of questions. When May finds a photograph tucked away in a safe deposit box, she soon finds herself delving into her mother's early life, and it leads to an investigation that leads to an unexpected romance with a rising journalist. When it comes to film, it's so important to understand the creative outlet and lens of the director and the writer. It gives you an understanding of their sense of creativity, how they may perceive things, because it will help you to compare and contrast, is this director, is this a writer, writer growing? Are they evolving? Are they constantly challenging their audiences. We have Spike Lee has his style of doing things. We have Scorsese that has his way. Usually you can pinpoint from a film who the director is and who writers are because they tend to have their signature styles and along with the way that they like to direct. So this is kind of the same fluidity of Stella Maggie. She's done movies such as Everything Is Everything, Jean of the jo uh, Joneses, The Weeknd, which I thought was really funny. But she has this style and this reputation from her works of this leading quirky type of character or characters trying to figure out their lives, this kind of contemporary love style, being awkward, trying to fit in, and trying to figure things out. So she has that fluidity with not only her writing, but her direction. So with understanding that, when I saw the, the preview for the movie and I saw who the director was, I already had it in my mind of her style. And when I saw this film, I thought, hmm, has she changed? or has she kept her same fluidity with the direction? So that helped me a lot. And once I saw the movie, I went, ha, huh, okay, that makes a lot of sense. So one of the main things with this movie, and I'll start with the pros, is that it's a feel good movie. Understand this is not Love Jones. This is not the best man. This is not brown sugar. Open your mind and try not to go into a movie comparing to a totally different creative mind because we have different writers, different directors, different producers, different feels of the movie. So the score of this movie was absolutely amazing. Shaka Khan, we had Erica Badu and so much more. So it set this mood to the movie and feeling very confident in this interest and pulling you in of how will this story evolve? I love the lighting, seeing brown skin in the correct lighting and correct formatting was very eye-opening and I went, wow, this is a really feel-good movie. So I actually liked that. I also liked that it was just a chance for the audience to see that not every love story, not everything that deals with quote unquote black love has to be perceived the same way. It's not a love Jones, it's something else. So I really, really like the fact that more directors are saying, hey, this is a, a, a depiction that is different. So that's something that I can remire and give a plus to.
So some of the cons. Number one, what is the plot and was the plot executed well? Unfortunately, no. There were so many different ideas and things floating around in the movie that could have been the temps of so many different plots that it swayed us away from what is the focus of these two characters. Casting directors are really, really important. So Issa Rae, she's well known for her writing and her producing and acting. She is a triple threat. She can dibble and dabble and do it all. So I appreciate that she's trying to change the range of not always being silly and goofy, but she can show a little bit more drama, especially when it comes to movies. The only thing is I felt we had so many crisp seasoned actors in this movie that they weren't brought to the forefront to execute those talents. Here's an example. Lakeith and Issa, even though they're wonderful, I really think that Issa's strength is writing and producing. Lakeith is a seasoned actor. For him to only be 28, he brings so much to the table and he has a plethora of things on his resume to say, hey, I have range. You don't feel convinced that there is this connection between the two. It feels in a way forced. And there are areas of Issa Rae's lines that seem pretty dry. I didn't know I could do that. <laughs> It didn't, eh, it didn't feel like it could have been, bam, this really forefront. You had other actresses in that film that I thought that if they were paired and did some switching around, it would have been a wonderful film. If you would have taken out the esque of the backstory of the mother, it would have been per perfect. To the screenwriter, to Stella, I would say, which plot and what scenario is more important? What are we trying to communicate? Is this more on the long, uh, lines of Issa building and, and, and researching the life of her mother and how she's evolved? Is this a love story between her and Keith? Is it a psychoanalysis of how she dates? There were many, going on to the next thing, there were many loopholes in the story. Without giving too much away, since there were so many different ideas and things going on in the movie, you felt kind of cheated because there would be times where she would read certain letters from her mother and she would read internally as the character, as, as the viewer. I'm like, I would love to know what her mother wrote. We have no idea. She's just... <laughs> You know, there were several loopholes. I do feel that if we took out the idea of the flashback and forth of her mother and her father in the past and correlating that with the present, if we would have taken that out, it would have been great. If with the casting, we switched some people around and made them the leads, it would have been excellent. But it's Hollywood and it's all about profit. When you have well-known names as the leads or the executive producers, people are like, oh, I know, I know Issa Rae. I, I love Lakeith. I love Lakeith. I'll go see it because I like him. So that brings people in. What I want directors and casting directors to please understand is that that's the only way that people are gonna have their breakout moments is if you take chances on unknown actors and actresses to take these leads. You had Courtney B. Vance, you had all of these wonderful people. Um, uh, Rob Morgan, who's just absolutely amazing. I think that that is something that dropped the ball. The communication on the plot of what's the story you're trying to tell. Don't con confuse your audience. Casting director, is this the right decision to see a cinematic energy that you could feel through the camera and not falling into, these are just names that we count on, we'll give them the leads, we'll pull in the people, and there you go. If you have a good enough performance, the word will spread. Hey, who's this new person? I've never seen her before. She's good. I hope I see him or her in more things. I'll give a perfect example. Lil Rel in this film, as a comedian, brought his funny to us. 
And it was very, he, he added those comedic moments in the movie that said, oh, he's a comedian, he's really good, he's bringing it in. Here is my thing, not just with him, just with everybody. Are we truly, truly, truly auditioning everyone? Are we truly saying this person is fit for this role? Because think about it. For a long time in black love, in black film, we saw the same people over and over again. Now this correlates with the movie, follow me. We would see Morris Chestnut, Vivica Fox, Tay Diggs, Sonali, we would see the same people over and over and over again. And to the point where people were just like, oh, it's a black number, oh, Morris Chestnut, he's the heartthrob in the movie, he's gonna be in it. Okay, it's just the same thing. And now I'm afraid, are we doing that now? Are we doing that with rotating the same actors over and over again? And I think that's pretty dangerous. Now, a lot of directors do that. Spike Lee does it, Scorsese does it. Um, a lot of people do it, okay? Um, so it's not something that this particular director has done. But when it comes to directors and casting directors, don't be afraid to leap forward. And I think that those tweaks would have changed the entire film. Issa Rae's strength is writing and producing. I feel that in such a dramatic love story, the attempt was great, but I didn't feel the bond. I didn't feel the connection. It wasn't believable. There were other characters and other couples in the movie that were more believable to me and where I thought, now they're in love. They have that, you know? Um, so I just really think, don't be afraid to give the ones who have those certain things and certain niches that have proven themselves to take the lead, give them those leads. They must do that. And also with Little Rail, Little Rail I feel that, let me move to the side so I can give an example. It frustrated me when I saw the preview because I picked photos from several different projects of Little Rail and this is how he looks in every film. I feel like I'm looking at the same guy in every movie. That's what I mean, are, are you auditioning? Or are we just saying this is a popular actor, this is a popular comedian, to pull in the dollars, let's just throw them out there. If I was a director, I, it's all about making classics. It's all about making classic movies. Um, Spike Lee took a, a, a chance on Samuel L. Jackson, Mackay Pfeiffer. It was those movies where he did rotate the same people, but he took chances on lead roles. So with black film, we must do that. And I feel with the plot and its ideas, it the ball was dropped when it comes to that. And I think the core of that is the script um, with Stella. It's a repetitious style of the lead and of a contemporary black love story. So it, it, it's starting to feel a little bit repetitive. Don't be afraid in having someone help you to develop your storyline and not to where you have so many ideas. Let's funnel out these certain ideas and let's keep the audience to where, you know, when they leave the, the theater, you feel like, oh, that was nice. But there were so many things where you were like, huh? Because you really didn't get clarification. Lakeith's character, how did he find certain, I don't want to give any, anything away, but it made you question certain things of certain characters because those questions weren't answered. Focus on a plot. Focus on some things. And if you're going to go back and forth, between the 1980s and present day, make sure you keep the audience connected of why you're doing it. And does that correlate with what we're watching? I hope that makes sense. Overall, everybody, it wasn't trash of a movie, but I do feel that the range in the cinematography and the screenplay gives it a an independent film-esque style movie Netflix should have been brought to the black screen the, the black screen the big screen eh. so overall I give this movie a 6.5 to a 7 out of 10 it ranges from 6.5 to 7 um, in that range 
it wasn't bad. Go see it. It's it's a really feel good film. It, it's nothing like seeing people that look like you on the big screen. It's always wonderful seeing black love. There's nothing wrong with that. But like any other film, critiques are due. So go see the movie. I think it was wonderful. It's something to go see with your friends. It's something to go see with your significant other. Good film, but not great. Um, but I do recommend you go see it. It wasn't bad. It didn't suck. It was just certain things that just kind of left you like, hmm, what? Why was this? Uh, uh, uh. And those are things that could easily be changed. I have no doubt that Lil Rel will have more range. I have no doubt that other actors are, that are in there will do more things. I just think that we have to say, oh, 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 oh. Well, we're starting to recycle the same people. And also Laurel speak with management, whoever, the, the, the casting director, the, the costume crew, that try something different. I know you wear glasses, but wear some contacts. Maybe this character has a chipped tooth. Maybe this character has different haircut. Maybe this, this character has locks or braids. Try something different because I feel like I'm looking at the same character over and over again. It's all love, it's no diss, but that's something that gives you the icing on the cake and making all of your characters different. Same thing with a lot of other actors that have the same looks and it doesn't give us this, oh, what, what's new with this person? So, but that's not the fault of the actors. It's, 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 it's a all, it all comes together. So let me know what you think. If you would like a spoiler review, of this movie, there's really not anything that much to spoil. It has some <laughs> moments, but it's a really good movie to see. Let me know what you think. Hopefully I don't get dragged through the comments. How dare you critique a black movie? <laughs> but it's all about making us better. We are making mounds and doing wonderful things with movie production and so much more. Let me know what you think. Subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any posts and check out other movie and television show reviews on the playlist. No need to dig around. Just go to the playlist, select and binge watch. Also follow me on Instagram at the same profile name, official bun underscore score E. <laughs> Talk to you later. Bye. <laughs>